The year is 2012. I'm 13 years old, and my name is Gabe. But I'm also known as Man Man with a Blue Box 21. And my love for Doctor Who brought me to create this channel, so that way I could go ahead and share my Lego creations with the world. Now, fast forward to 2024, we're here. And now I can bring the Doctor Who creations that I loved and built into Legos to real life. Hello, Lego fans. This is Man Man with a Blue Box 21 coming at you with a Doctor Who custom review. Well, some things never change. Even back in 2012 when I was obsessed with Doctor Who, I wanted a Cyberman helmet. And now, in 2024, at the age of 25, I can 3D print my own Cyberman helmet. So it's exactly what we're gonna do today. Hi, I'm Gabe, and this is G Studios Art. This is the place where we're gonna do a lot of 3D printing and projects, and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can go ahead and achieve the looks that I've made. I'm gonna go ahead and go through an extensive tutorial on basically how to go ahead and uh, find the files, how to print, how to sand, how to fill, how to do everything, all the way up into the final finish process. So today, the first thing we're gonna tackle and the first episode that we're gonna tackle, we're gonna go all the way back to my roots and my love for Doctor Who, and we're gonna create the Cyber Controller Helmet. Let's get into it. Now, before we get started, let's go ahead and get into all of the different tools and materials that I use to go ahead and make this Cyberman helmet. first step in this process is to start sanding all of the pieces. We want them smooth and we want the edges smooth as well so that they line up with each other as nice as possible and give us that flush look. That way, of course, we don't have to worry about filling in as big of cracks when we go ahead and, of course, actually complete this and do this. You'll see I'm soldering the pieces together. This is going to give a really strong hold. I also glued the pieces together as well so it has the strength from the glue and then the strength from the actual soldering itself of the plastic pieces together. I obviously go ahead and do this on the inside of the entire 3D print so that way you don't see any of these melted lines on the outside and it's not something that I also have to go ahead and sand down on the outside as well and it all obviously gets covered within. As you'll see here, I continue to go ahead and solder the final couple of pieces. This is the back piece that I'm working on right now of the head of the helmet. Um, once I go ahead and actually get that attached, which I'm doing now, uh, then at that point, it's really just, you know, sanding the rest of the other pieces, gluing and soldering them together, and then moving on to the rest. Now, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna explain sanding and the grits that you wanna use. So the lower grit sandpaper is really where you wanna be at when it comes to first starting out and getting that base sanding done. You really wanna be anywhere between 60 grit sandpaper and 80 grit sandpaper. This is gonna allow you to go ahead and really start to like get those printer lines down and really start to, you know, get to the point where you need to be so that you can get to the finer grit sandpapers. So you're gonna start with 80 or 60 or 80. You're gonna be in that range. Then after you do those initial passes, you'll wanna go ahead and get into 120, 150, and 180. What I personally like to do and what you'll see me do in this tutorial is I will start with 60 to 80. I'll really start sanding it, get all the rough parts out first. Then I'll hit it with two sprays, two layers, I guess you could say, of the filler and primer. After I've done that filler and primer, then I really like to go in with the 100s and above. I'll start with 120, and then I'll go to 150 and 180. 
Then after that, you're going to be getting into the super fine grits of sandpaper, which are going to be 220, 400, 600, and even 1,000. I only go up to 400, so I'll do a wet, a dry sand of 220 normally, and then a wet sand of 220 and a wet sand of 400, which I'll get into wet sanding later as well. Now you'll see here with the remaining pieces, I went ahead and took a torch and I went ahead and there were a bunch of different like straggly pieces that were hanging off of the 3D print. So I just went ahead and kind of melted them down. And then I took some 80 grit sandpaper and I started sanding them off and you'll see they all just flake off like that. Uh, then once all the pieces are soldered together, you're gonna go ahead and take a mouse sander. The mouse sander is gonna work great to go ahead and really uh, get into all the different areas and just, you know, sand that down and save yourself some energy because you've got a lot of sanding to do uh, coming up in all the other pieces that you're going to be doing. So I'm using 80 grit sandpaper on this and I'm going over all the different areas. It really helps to take down uh, a decent amount of the layer lines before we go ahead and start with, you know, throwing in some Bondo putty and filling in some of the bigger cracks and crevices that we have because obviously, you know, we're going to have them with gluing and soldering. And here it is after sanding. It looks still pretty rough, so that's why we're going immediately into the Bondo filling. You'll see the back of this I did, and that was where I've sanded and actually done and done smoothly. I did it with 120 grit sandpaper at this point, and now of course we have the entire front that we have to cover because uh, there's still some pieces there, so we'll go ahead and tackle that next. Now please make sure you use the proper respirator or at least some sort of protection. I know that there are certain respirators that need to be used in certain conditions, but I make sure that I use something with a cartridge, a 3M, a half face, or even a full face would be preferred so that way none of the dust from any of the sanding or the Bondo flakes go ahead and get in your eyes as well because that could cause damage as well. I'm not that safe, but it's a good suggestion, uh, is definitely recommended and considered in a lot of these different processes and when working with these materials uh, to make sure that none of this gets in your lungs. Now you'll see here, I did use a different method while I was kind of uh, scrolling through. I saw that somebody had mixed the Bondo putty and acetone together to kind of create a liquidy paste, which I was able to paint on with a regular paintbrush. You'll see here, it kind of gets in pretty deep and, and lays on pretty thick. So I was happy with the results from this and it allowed me to not necessarily have to continuously uh, you know, layer on uh, Bondo. And you'll see here, I start with a heavy coat of the filler and primer. Once again, I then go in and sand it down. Uh, once I sand it down, obviously I had hit it with another round of 120 and then went into 150. This really started to smooth everything out. We obviously had a majority of the lines all filled in, which allowed us to go ahead and move on to obviously a finer grid sandpaper. And we're heading towards the end of the build as well and getting into painting. From here, I went ahead and I applied another coat and then I started sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. You'll see that there is a little bit of still, you know, defects, discrepancies and everything, but that's something that we're going to continue to go ahead and smooth out. Just make sure that you work properly when it comes to applying the grits of sandpaper. Uh, now we're going to go up and into wet sanding. So we're going to get all these pieces prepped, primed and ready and we're going to do wet sanding. After I go ahead and obviously get all of the painting done in terms of the filler and primer. The last thing that I'm going to do is do that wet sanding, which I had mentioned earlier. The wet sanding is really, really, really going to give us that smooth finish, which we really want before we put on that first couple coats of paint and eventually our metallic paint and our clear coat and whatever other paint that we're going to put on there. Now with wet sanding, all you're gonna do is take a strip of the sandpaper. Like I said, I used 220 to start here. You're gonna soak it and then immediately apply it on top of the 3D print. 
You can also go ahead and if you have a sink or like some sort of trough that you can work in and you can run the water on top of it and then you don't even have to dip the sandpaper in there, but I don't have something like that, so that's why I use the sheet pan. You go ahead and you dip the sandpaper in there and then you constantly just, you know, sand back and forth. Like I said, you're gonna notice super quickly that this is gonna get everything really, really, really smooth. Um, and this is gonna be optimal for putting those first couple coats of spray paint on. Then once I'm done with the 220, I'm gonna go in to 400. Then after the 400, that's it, we're done with the wet sanding. And then we're going into my favorite part, which is the painting. Now you'll see here, I'm working on sanding the pieces of the helmet with 80 grit sandpaper. Uh, this will allow a nice contact with the Loctite super glue that I'm gonna go ahead and use for the actual helmet itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that and you'll see here, as soon as I go ahead and attach it, I end up breaking it uh, because I ended up you know, not doing it correctly and the print was a little bit off and I needed to sand it a little bit more. But eventually we got there and we were able to go ahead and glue it all together. Now comes my favorite part. We go ahead and we throw this on the slab to get our paint and primer on there. Uh, I believe I just used the nylon, or, or Krylon, pff, nylon, uh, Krylon uh, high gloss black paint and primer. And I coated that pretty heavy on this. Uh, obviously I was doing even coats and I'm speeding it up here because somebody just wants to watch me spray paint this. Uh, and then after this, I hit it with a metallic Rust-Oleum after everything, of course, was dry with the black. And then that fetched us our finished result, which we're gonna go ahead and get into now. For the painting, I used a gloss black, and then I just used a rattle can of silver because I realized that the silver isn't like super, super silvery, like like a Mandalorian helmet or something where I needed like a really like chrome shine. It was kind of just like a metal looking silver. So I was fine with just using a spray paint. It didn't really bother me. Then after that, of course, I applied uh, a couple coats of clear coat. I used a Duplicolor acrylic clear coat. I did two light coats over top of it to kind of just give it the base coat. And then the third coat was a little tiny bit heavier and that allowed me to get my finished result. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the reveal. So, here is the completed and finished Cyberman helmet. What do you guys think? Did you like the video? Did you like the helmet, how it turned out? I honestly gotta say, I do love the look of the helmet. There are some spots that are a little, you know, rough around the edges, uh, but regardless, I appreciate you all and I thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw, I would greatly appreciate if you subscribed. And if you wanna check out some HD pictures of this helmet and some of my other projects, everything is on my Instagram at gstudios underscore art. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.